For today's Cyber CEO episode, we just have found what a great resource Cyberbacker is. Just plug into that more. Adrian is our first cyberbacker. He does pretty much database management, builds call lists for the agents on the team. He helps with smart plans, a lot of CRM based work for us. That's the bulk of his work. Database is far more organized and every agent's life is easier because they know exactly who they're supposed to call every week. Plugging in that leverage for someone to have that be their focus has made our business run a lot smoother from that standpoint. Our second cyberbacker, uh, that's Christine, and she does our marketing stuff. Anything that's like graphic design type stuff from the email, she, she builds all that for us. So the quality of what we put out has definitely gone up since Christine has came on board and our consistency is probably even better than that. And we have some exciting stuff in the works with her from a, a video standpoint for YouTube and expanding social media. So we're excited to get that going in, in 2024 as well. Welcome to Cyber CEO, wherein we talk about how our cyber backers helped our cyber CEOs take their businesses to the next level. Cyber CEO is powered by Cyberbacker, the world's leading provider of admin support services from anywhere in the world to anyone in the world. Please visit our website www.cyberbacker.com for more details. It's a great day here at Cyberbacker. My name is Jello. We're back with another episode of Cyber CEO. And of course, we have a special guest coming back to the show. Brooks, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. We're very excited again to just check up on you, what's been going on between you and your Cyberbacker. But um, before we head on to that, um, how long have you been with Cyberbacker so far, man? Oh, geez. We hired our first Cyberbacker about a year and a half ago, I would say. A year and a half. So, um, also, I checked on here. You have two cyberbackers as of the moment, correct? Uh, we do have two cyberbackers right now. Uh, we just actually signed a contract to add a third cyberbacker. Wow. Gosh, adding more cyberbackers, adding more leverage to the business. So, if you don't mind me asking, Brooks, um, why add more cyberbackers to the team? Um, so, as the team has continued to grow and we've had more positions come available. We just have found what a great resource Cyberbacker is and just plug into that more for, for additional help. So more leverage, of course, for the business. Now, talk to me more about the first two Cyberbackers that you currently work with. What do they, what do, they do in the business? Yeah, so uh, Adrian uh, was our first Cyberbacker that we hired. and He does pretty much database management. Um, he builds call lists for the agents on the team. He helps with smart plans, um, a lot of CRM based work for us. That's, that's the bulk of his work mm -hmm. helps. Yeah. He, so I guess he helps scrub the database too. So we go through and double check people who are missing contact info and he helps us build those lists. So as the agents are having communication with people, they have an easy list for what's missing. Let's get stuff up to date. Um, Anytime we do like a uh, mm -hmm. event that adds a large number of people to the database, he makes sure that that stuff is organized, tagged, has everyone's information in there. Um, so we know when and how we're communicating with our people. Right, there we go. So preparing stuff, of course, preparing just for everything to be smooth. Now, how about your third cyberback? What do you have planned for your third cyberback? Yeah, so our third cyberbacker is going to be transaction management for us. So transaction and listing management. So there'll be some client communication, uh, primarily via email and text. Also communicating with the third parties like title companies and lenders, uh, the agents who are on the other side of the transaction, help run down paperwork and, and things like that. Okay, so a lot of that plan already for your third cyberbacker. Now, um, I'm also curious about um, the partnerships, of course, that you've built with each cyberbacker. For your first two cyberbackers, though, because we get this question a lot here, in, um, of course, for um, new clients that we have. Um, how do you make it work? Because you seem to have like the secret potion or the secret stuff for this to work out now going on your third cyberbacker. So um, any tips that you can share, especially for business owners who are just diving in to the, to their first um, virtual partnership? Yeah. So a couple things um, I would say 
that the number one thing is just because someone's not sitting in the room with you doesn't mean that you should communicate with them any less than if you had it in person, right? So we uh, communicate with our cyberbackers every day. Yeah. They are involved in our team meetings on on Mondays, so they kind of know what our plan is for the week. And yeah, just making sure that we have good communication and constant communication with them just as if they were sitting in the office with me. Um, I think that's one of the biggest ones. We, The way that we accomplish that uh, is we actually have a Google Meet open all business hours. And our cyber backers and in-person staff are all in there. So then myself or any agent can hop in and, and just have a face-to-face with them real quick. And they can also communicate with each other that way, uh, along with the Google Chat features and Space features that we use. So we use G Suite for, for pretty much all of our communication. That's a good suggestion. That's a good tip right there. Just So basically, all throughout the day, Mondays through Fridays, that Google Meet is all open. Just if anyone needs anything, just talk there, something like that. And I can't take credit for that idea. Uh, I'm going to name drop a good friend of mine who is also a cyber CEO and a franchise owner. Uh, Mike Hyde started doing that with his team. And I was like, dude, that's so smart. We're, we're doing that starting tomorrow. Like <laughs> as soon as I heard about it, like immediately we're going to do that. Gosh, uh, it works. It works good. great. So highly encourage that. <laughs> um, if it's not that exact system, whatever it is, it's, it's a, lots of communication. Like I said, I feel like it's easy when people are working virtually, even if, you know, it's local people working virtually that we found through uh, COVID and things like that. If you're not communicating with them on a regular basis, it's easy for things to get missed or things to get forgotten, people to get Mm -hmm. a little bit lax on things. So I, I think that constant communication so everyone knows what the expectations are and how to win that day and, and make sure that everything's successful. Of course. Open, clear communication, very important. And again, a fantastic idea there. So shout outs to one of our um, rock star franchise owners, right? Here, Mike Hyde, of course, about that. Now, um, how about challenges though? Any challenges that are, that have come up so far when working with someone virtual and how do you um, attack that? And how do you solve those um, um, challenges? Yeah. So, I think originally, I think the Google Meet is is one of those ways that we accomplished that because there was some delay when we were relying heavily on email communication for people who are not in the office, right? I email someone, they're in the middle of a task, which is totally fine. They should be focused on what their task is at the time. And then by the time they email me, I end up that I'm, I'm busy and a couple hours can go by before we get things sorted out. Um, so to have the chat features and the Google Meet available so we can figure out a time that we can just talk, knock out whatever needs to be addressed really quickly so we can both move on to you know, our, our next task, if you will. So that was the one thing. Um, it was probably the biggest one, I would say, mm-hmm. is that if you don't have a great system for how you're going to resolve issues or work on projects together, mm-hmm. it uh, can get a little bit irritating if it's just back and forth back and forth so, so really that would be the big one that i would say really have to have the really need to have those systems in place of course especially when you're working with someone virtual now talking about that um what else do you need you think during the beginning of the partnership just for this partnership to be successful what else do you need do you need to prepare anything yeah so i think exp- what your expectations are as the cyber ceo um so it is really hard for someone in person or virtual to do a good job or meet your expectations if they don't know what that is, True. Uh, especially in the beginning. So I think any type of timeline of, hey, this is the work that we expect you to be able to get done this week, this month, whatever it is, uh, especially in the beginning. And then also, you know, understanding that we're kind of making educated guesses of how much time these tasks are going to take. So having a plan, having expectations, but be willing to be realistic and flexible. Mm-hmm. If, um, you know, there's evidence that, Hey, maybe we overestimate what can actually be done in this time period. Um, you know, if you ask someone to go through, we'll use our, our, uh, database manager mm-hmm. as an example, go through 300 contact cards a day, oh, yeah. edit them and pull them into, um, an Excel spreadsheet to show what contact info is missing. So we can get that up to date. 
that might be, a, I don't know if 300 is the number I made that up, that, that might be a lot. That might be too many for them, you know, depending on how much contact info is missing and how many of them are complete. So you got to kind of have that standard in the beginning and then assess it as you go through a couple of days and see if you need to change your standards. But uh, yeah, just having a, a clear, here's what what's going to happen is winning for everyone. Let's, let's try and go and hit that. So basically it's like a 30, 60, 90 plan, something like that, right? Yeah. So we, if, if people are familiar with the 30, 60, 90, we do a 30, 60, 90 for our cyber backers and agents and in-person staff. So everyone on the team goes through a 30, 60, 90. They all obviously look differently. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, if, you know, that, that's the perfect example is this is what we expect you to be able to get done in the first month. Absolutely. I agree with you there. hundred percent. Now, um, You've been with Cyberbacker for a while now, a year and a half. What's been the biggest impact of working with your Cyberbackers so far? So I, I think a couple things. The data, I'm going to go back to the database management. My database is far more organized and every agent's life is easier because they know exactly who they're supposed to call every week. Um, we kind of had a system before, but it wasn't a great system. And plugging in that leverage for someone to have that be their focus has made our business run a lot smoother from that standpoint. And then we haven't really talked too much about our second cyber backer. Uh, that's Christine. Yeah. And she does uh, our marketing stuff. She started part-time and then has moved full-time. So she's in charge of social media creation, social media engagement, um, email, anything that's like graphic design type stuff from the email. She, she builds all that for us. So the quality of what we put out has definitely gone up since Christina's came on board and our consistency is probably even better than that. Uh, and we have some exciting stuff in the works with her from a, a video standpoint for YouTube and expanding social media. So we're excited to get that going in, in 2024 as well. So really already a lot of success, a ton of growth between you and your cyber backers and now adding another member to the cyber back to your cyber backer team. Of course, now before we go, since it's going to be the holidays real soon, would you want to give your cyber backers a simple message or a quick shout out on the show before we go? Yeah, I mean, thank you guys so much for making 2023 a great year. I'm looking forward to working with you guys in the 2024 and I hope that you have a wonderful holiday season. And I will talk to you all tomorrow because we talk every day. There we go. Now, Brooks, we really appreciate you coming back to the show. Always have a blast having you here. Again, thank you very much for your time. You bet. Thank you for listening to our daily dose of Cyber CEO. Stay tuned to know more about how Cyberbacker creates a difference in this digital time and age. You can visit our website www.cyberbacker.com and follow our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Spotify.